This episode of Trifles is brought to you by the Baker Street Journal, the leading publication of Sherlock Holmes scholarship since 1946. Find them online at bakerstreetirregulars.com. Welcome to Trifles, a weekly podcast about the Sherlock Holmes stories. It is, of course, a trifle, but there is nothing so important as trifles. Yes, the band was speckled and there were six Napoleons, but there are so many other details to pick apart in the stories. Pray, be precise as to details. You know the plots, but what about the minutia? Have you ever stopped to wonder about why Dr. Watson was called James by his wife? Or of Sherlock Holmes' dining habits? Or what happened when he let a criminal escape? You are very inquisitive, Mr. Holmes. It is my business to know what other people don't know. Scott Monty and Bert Wolder will have the answers to these questions and more in Trifles. The game's afoot. Episode 172. The mystery of Watson's second wound. Well, hello and welcome to Trifles, the Sherlock Holmes podcast where we look into the details in the Sherlock Holmes stories. I'm Scott Monty. I'm Bert Walder. And today we have one of the legendary bits of scholarship about Dr. Watson. Yes, that's right. It is the third week of the month, and that means we are engaging in one of our Mr. Sherlock Holmes the Theorist episodes where we look at a piece of classic Sherlockian scholarship and pick it apart a little bit, uh, help scratch the surface there and get you to understand what was going on in the minds of these early Sherlockians. Show notes for this episode are available at ihose.co slash trifles172. That will lead you to the very specific page for this episode on sherlockholmespodcast.com, which is our website. While you're there, you can leave us a comment or you can elect to send in a donation, either through Patreon or PayPal, whatever works for you. We're not fussy. We do appreciate your support in any way. And we also might ask you to leave a rating or review for the show on Apple Podcasts. You don't need to have an iPhone to do that or even an Apple computer. Anyone can sign up and leave a rating and review. We do appreciate that, and it helps other interested Sherlockians find the show. So Watson's second wound. This is almost as controversial as Watson's second wife as a bit of scholarship. Oh. Yeah, we are, yes. we are, <laughs> we are met, uh, with the, uh, claim, and, and who are we to doubt it since uh, Watson himself tells us in a study in Scarlet that Watson was wounded during the Battle of Maiwand in Afghanistan. He says he was struck on the shoulder by a Jezail bullet which shattered the bone and grazed the subclavian artery. And as we would expect when he meets Holmes, Holmes uh, observes that he's holding his arm in a stiff manner, and that indicates uh, some kind of war injury. Um, however, in a future a story, I think it was as soon as a sign of four, uh, Watson talks about his leg bothering him and Holmes even wondering if he could make a six mile walk on his leg. And of course, immediately within two stories, we're given material of conflict of, of the facts not jibing with each other. It immediately brings to mind, well, was Watson wounded twice? Was he lying to us about one of these? Where to begin? And in fact, James Ketty Jr., who was uh, a member of the Baker Street Irregulars and uh, the son of the founder of the Speckled Band of Boston, uh, in 1944, for Profile by Gaslight, he wrote The Mystery of the Second Wound. And it was, it was his take on how to discern what happened with Watson and his shoulder and his leg. Now, Bert, as you think about your evolution as a Sherlockian and hearing about 
various competing theories with regard to Watson's second wound. Have any stuck out to you or uh, what, what's, what's your own conclusion, Ben, with regard to Watson's wandering wound? Oh, my own conclusion. Well, I must say, I don't re, I don't really have one. I mean, I have, I, you know, there's certain things I think about all this, but I don't have a particular conclusion. When I first read the Sherlock Holmes stories, frank, frankly, I didn't pay any of it any attention. You know, he, okay, so he had a wound here, he had a wound there. I mean, it was some years before I got into the deep, the sort of deep Sherlockismus of the fun of of all of this. Um, so when I, when I was first reading it, I didn't pay any attention. I do think a couple of things that I would point out about what you just, um, reviewed so well about Keddy, um, back in the 1940s and other views about, you know, this number, about the Watson wound question. The one thing I would point out is that if you look at Keddy's story, the mystery of the second moon, which appeared, as you say, in profiles by profile by Gaslin in 1944. The wonderful thing about it is its brevity. You know, mm. James Kenny does it doesn't go on nearly as long as I do about just virtually anything. <laughs> I mean, this is this is you know this is maybe two pages. So you don't need to write uh, Gone with the Wind. You know, if you're interested in Sherlockian scholarship. Mm. Um, so I think that's really a lot of fun. But I do tend to. Um, admire the point of view which I think um, Sovine or Sovine um, developed in uh, his particular Baker Street Journal piece in 1959, which is basically that, um, you know, you listen to, um, you know, what Watson says, which, which is that... Um, you know, he was wounded in, um, he was grazed on the shoulder by a Jezeel bullet. Um, now I think, you know, the Jezeel is a, is a big, heavy rifle. So one would think this is not an insignificant sized shell. Hmm. So he's struck in the shoulder by a Jezeel bullet, which shattered the bone, um, and glazed the subclavian artery. Now, all of that is very, very clear from a study in Scarlet. I mean, this is not imagining. This is very specific. I had this bullet. He tells us everything except which shoulder it was in. Uh, and it grazed this particular um, artery. I'm a fan of the idea that his position was such that the bullet in traveling out uh, from this grazing of the subclavian artery, artery eventually lodged in his leg. I think that's very clever. However, there have been people over the years who've said, um, you know, clearly Watson was wounded twice, is, which is what Keddie says very declaratively. Some people say that, uh, you know, Watson was bent over. There are people who say, you know, the simplest solution is that he was shot from below while he was answering a call of nature, as it were, which, which I think is, is a bit bizarre. Um, I have, I have two fun, um, you know, which we could get to later, maybe two sort of fun explanations for what could have happened. One that I admire and one that I think is very ingenious, but let me, let me stop there. Okay. I will do that. I will let you stop. Yeah. Um, well, just to um, to give a little more color around Keddie's argument, uh, he he says he shouts, I should say, because it's in all caps. Where was Doctor Watson's second wound? It did not prevent me from walking, he says. Yet it handicapped him in walking. Uh, those are both uh, references from the sign of four. Now he says Doctor Watson was a man of considerable modesty. This fact stands out in all of his writings. He constantly played down his own part in the drama of Baker Street so that his hero might be thrown into still higher relief. The citations here are needless. And he goes on to say, Dr. Watson himself gives us the definite clue that leads to the solution of the mystery of the second wound. He, of course, says that he was struck on the shoulder. Um, 
And, and he says, uh, I would have been thrown into the hands of the murderous Ghazis had it not been for the courage shown by Murray, my orderly, who threw me across a pack horse and succeeded in bringing me safely to the British lines. Safely, that is, but for the second wound, of which Watson's modesty and delicacy forbade his making mention. A man thrown across a pack horse presents a singularly enticing target. His head and arms hang down one side of the pack horse, his legs dangle on the other. The hinterlands of the assistant surgeon Watson was the billet for the second Jezail bullet. It was there he sustained his second wound. It would seem, as suggested above, that one wound, a shoulder wound, might be mentioned with modesty, decorum, and self-respect. A wound in the Sitzenplatz might suggest that the gallant doctor was not exactly facing the foe, as a good soldier should. In any case, and this, one believes, counted even more heavily with Dr. Watson, the mention of such a wound would be indelicate. <laughs> so there you go. Watson was wounded in the backside, which would make sense in terms of it not stopping him from walking, but would handicap his walking. Well, more on the wound from uh, Sovine and Wolder after we return. It is always a pleasure to receive the Baker Street Journal in the mail. It comes not four, but five times a year. Your four seasonal quarterlies plus the Christmas annual. And each time it is a welcome sight. That envelope arriving, tearing it open, seeing the yellow-backed cover. And the cover art in recent years has been changing each time. The publishers are keeping us on our toes. And, of course, the content inside is no less exciting. You don't get too much on repeat with the Baker Street Journal, although you will see responses to various articles by other authors. But it is a lovely way to stay in touch with the Sherlockian world and to understand the things that are on people's minds and the things that are worth discussing. Check it out at BakerStreetIrregulars.com and make sure you subscribe today. We're back and talking about Watson's second wound. The two competing articles we're referring to are James Ketty Jr.'s The Mystery of the Second Wound from Profile by Gaslight in 1944, edited by Edgar Smith, and The Singular, the singular Bullet, by, quote, Dr. Hill Barton, a.k.a. J.W. Savine, in the Baker Street Journal, uh, volume 9, number 1, from 1959. Incidentally, uh, Dr. Joe W. Savine uh, has a background of being in the Naval, or being a member of the Naval War College and the American College of Ses- Chest Surgeons. So he's got a, a bit of uh, credibility to lend himself to this argument. So, Bert, you you have also been involved with the Naval War College in Newport, Rhode Island. Is that uh, is that correct? Well, I wouldn't say involved. I ha- I know people who are on. Um, over the years, I've enjoyed spending time with people who have been on the faculty of the Naval War College. I'm a member of a group called the Victorian Military Society. Oh, that's what it is, right? Right, which meets in the states. It's rather. A large group in England. There's one U.S. offshoot of it, scion of it, and we meet um, on the first Friday of February in Newport at a dinner, and um, that's a tradition that was established by Captain Howard Brown back in the 1970s, and uh, it's an enormous amount of fun. So that's my that's my connection. But I just completed an Got essay, it. actually, the BSI press over the next year or two will come out with a book as part of the profession series about the Navy. And thanks to Marsha Pollock and Mike Quigley, I finally concluded an essay about the Admiralty and about the Royal Navy in Victorian and Edwardian times. It was a lot of fun. I don't, I didn't know anything about the Royal Navy and the Admiralty in Victorian uh, times and uh, wound hmm. up enjoying reading a certain large number of books. And I'd, I'd still be scribbling on that essay if <laughs> If there hadn't been a deadline. Well, we will look forward to that publication from our sponsor for this episode, uh, at some point in the future. So that is, uh, that is encouraging. Well, um, 
Dr. Savine mentions, uh, you know, some very compelling arguments. And, and again, here is a, a gentleman who has a history in medicine and can look at things from more of a practitioner's standpoint. But he notes um, that we are not told that Dr. Watson was shot in the heel, but that he had a damaged tendo Achilles. We are never told that Watson had two military wounds. We are never, repeat, never told that he had been struck by two Jezail bullets. Now, let's just put down what we are told. Dr. Watson was struck in the shoulder by a Jezail bullet, which grazed the subclavian artery and shattered a bone. The following year, 1881, he still carried the left arm in an unnatural manner. In the fall of 1887 by Mr. Bell's chronology, that's H.W. Bell, he sat nursing his wounded leg and mentions that he had had a Giselle bullet through it some time before and that it ached with weather changes in the same period that Mr. Holmes mentioned the damaged tendo Achilles. And then, a month later, Watson stated definitely that he had been brought back from his Afghan campaign, that he had brought back from his Afghan Gan campaign, a Giselle bullet in his leg with further comments on the weather and the persistent dull throbbing. So from there, Sovine goes on to say um, that it wasn't necessarily uh, the left clavicle uh, that uh, that was uh, that grazed. It, it, it was uh, possibly the left scapula. And he says the bullet then ricocheted, passing to the left and downward describing a spiral curve deep under the skin of the chest and abdomen, thence downward into the left leg, coming to rest in the calf muscles. Now, for any people that have studied the Kennedy assassination, the JFK assassination, this sounds like that magic bullet. Um, however, the way Sovine describes it is that Watson would have been uh, perhaps in a medical tent uh, bent over examining a patient. And as he was, as he was in that position, it would have actually allowed the bullet to enter Watson, uh, and, and re- come to rest in his leg, entering at his shoulder and coming to rest in his leg when he was bent over in such a, a position. And what's really interesting to me is that he says, in fact, this theory accounts for so much that it's a shame that it's improbable. However, is it impossible? The question can be answered with assurance, for just such a case has come to my attention. The case in mind concerned the entry of a thirty-eight caliber pistol bullet below the left scapula. The bullet then coursed downward and to the left between the skin subcutaneous and subcutaneous fat to lodge in the upper third of the left thigh. There was only one wound of entry, and the bullet was still in the patient when examined. And he says, of this I am satisfied. Dr. Watson was struck in the left shoulder by a Giselle bullet. It was his one and only military wound. It just took an irregular course. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think that's a, a fascinating bit of uh, of, of uh, bringing one's profession into it and uh, and and some actual science uh, as, as well. But I'd like to hear the theories that you uh, you presaged before, Bert. What what are a couple of the the more fun theories of Doctor Watson's second wound that you have? Well, there's there's an observation and then two theories, and the last one I really liked. I mean, the observation is where was Holmes? In all of this, I mean, why is it that over the years, Holmes, uh, who we know had looked at some of Watson's cases, did not gently point out to him that you have your wife calling you James over here and that here you mentioned that you were wounded in the shoulder and there you mentioned you were wounded in the leg. Well, that would argue. Well, first of all, the answer to that is that we very seldom hear Holmes speak. I mean, it's only in the later cases that Holmes theoretically writes these these accounts himself. It's always Watson reporting what Holmes uh, says and Watson reporting what he himself says. So that's sort of one thing. But you could say this is proof for the uh, Sovine explanation because Holmes, as a 
great forensic criminologist would have a lot of experience in tracing the path of bullets and uh, their course and, and would probably not be giving this a second thought. But the two theories, um, you know, one is, is, is a bit goofy and one I happen to really like, and I shouldn't, I suppose I shouldn't characterize it as goofy, but one theory says, you know, boy, this is just all of a piece with Watson. One day he's telling us he was wounded here and another day he was telling us he was wounded there and his dates are wrong and this is wrong and that's wrong. You know, that theory says, what I think really happened, This is, and this isn't my theory, this is just something I've read that people have written over the years, what I think really happened. And what do we know about Watson? He's got no one. He's alone in the world. His brother is gone. He's got no friends, nothing. What happened? What happened was Watson was killed at Maywand, and Murray <laughs> took his place. And that explains a lot about his inability to sustain a medical practice, his constant reliance on brandy, his confusion about dates, the overwhelming guilt. His wife not um, knowing his name. His wife's not knowing his name. Yeah, she probably called him Murray. Well, I think that's that's... That's a bit silly, but the one that I like in terms of a theory is that um, Watson was indeed wounded twice, and this is, of course, our friend Robert S. Katz's theory that explains quite a bit that Watson as a young man was actually in America and, in fact, mm. was at Gettysburg in um, July of 1863 at Little Round Top, and that Holmes, when he was in the States, masquerading as Altamont, took an opportunity to visit the battlefields of Gettysburg and looked about and remembered um, his friend's early experiences as a young man and, and located him there. And that, you know, I really, I find charming. And, of course, Bob's Bob's theory is that Watson's second wound happened at Gettysburg. Mm. And I must say that it, you can read the canon up and down and find nothing to contradict it. <laughs> <laughs> that is very true. Well, and if you recall, longtime listeners of the show will recall that we actually had Bob Katz on the show last year to discuss that. He was on with us in episodes 135 and 136 to talk about John Watson's youth. And it was in episode 136 that Bob talked about Gettysburg. So we'll have a link to that, or you can just go to ihost.co slash trifles136 as a, as a handy uh, shortcut there, all lowercase, uh, to hear Bob's theory. Well, Bert, I think we can, uh, quickly, uh, just destroy any theories about Watson's second wound with the very simple observation of where Watson was wounded. And that's in Afghanistan. And that's just a trifle. It is, of course, a trifle, but there is nothing so important as trifles. Please join us again next week for another installment of Trifles. Show notes are available on SherlockHolmesPodcast.com. Please subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts and be sure to check out our longer show, I Hear of Sherlock Everywhere, where we interview notable Sherlockians and share news of the Sherlockian world. You take my breath away, Mr. Holmes. Two bullets fired. Two wounds inflicted, as you said. Yes, Doctor. Then how do you account for the bullet that has so obviously struck the window frame?